Hey, what's going on, Facebook fams? Look, I was just in the gym, and I was um, having this discussion. Um, gentleman brought it to me, normal pass. He says, uh, Pastor Q, how do you feel about this vaccination? Are you going to get the vaccination? And uh, should we, you know, as believers, get the vaccination? And um, what, what I was trying to explain to him, like, you know, I would explain to anybody is that um, no, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we should or we should not get a vaccination. But the Bible does tell me that the uh, true vaccination is salvation, is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And in receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that is that is the true vaccination. That sin is the uh, true sickness of man. So um, when someone says, should we or should not we not get the uh, vaccination, I would say it, it, it doesn't matter because the Bible teaches us to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Um, I think we're getting too caught up in these conspiracy theories if we should get the uh, vaccine or we shouldn't. But I, I think we fail to realize that you and I can, can, can die from anything. So if you don't get the virus, I mean, you don't get the vaccine, it just so happens you get hit by a bus or you die from a, from a gunshot or you have some type of fatal disease, it, it doesn't matter. The, uh, the whole key to this conspiracy theorist thing has to be salvation. God didn't tell you to try to figure out what the government is doing. God never told you to try to figure out what the enemy is doing. The Bible says, trust the Lord with all thine heart. Um, lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths God didn't tell you to find out what the white man is doing what the black man is doing what Fauci is doing um, you know who this 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 vaccine that they're trying to put in you what they're trying to do you're going to lose your peace trying to be able to figure out what the enemy's doing um, God didn't tell Moses to try to figure out what Pharaoh was doing um, that, that that's one of the things um, and just to go into a quick teaching right that's why God told them to stay away from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because it was no need to have the knowledge if you have God. All things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So I don't need to eat from a tree of knowledge of good and evil to know what the conspiracies say, my brother, and this is what the man is doing. The man is going to put this vaccine. It, it, it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day. Whether you get the vaccine or you don't, do you have Christ? Do you know where you spend eternity if you die? Whether you get the vaccine or you don't get the vaccine, what happens if you die? People have been dying before this pandemic. People are going to die after this pandemic. I think it's uh, very sad that we are going through this pandemic. But we, we, we still have to trust in God. We still have to believe that um, this is all part of God's plan. We still have to understand that when God uh, wrote everything, when he wrote the, when, when the, when the uh, Bible was written, the Bible says that he's the alpha and the mega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and fin he's the author and finishers of our faith. Don't think when God wrote everything, he wrote the beginning, he wrote the end, he didn't write the pandemic. You have to understand if God is an author, he wrote this. This is a part of the book. This is part, this is one of the chapters. This is something that we may go through. This is not something that they spring up and say, hey, God, you got to put this in the movie. This is one of the scripts. God says, no, it is written. I wrote the pandemic. I wrote it inside of the script. It, it's all a part of it. But I think we're too focused on should we or should we not get it? Let me tell you this. Before you worry about if you should get a vaccination, worry about if you're saved, worry about your salvation, Wor worry about if you have the blood. Um, that's Old Testament. If you have the blood of the lamb, there's power in the blood of Jesus. If you have the blood of the lamb, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So if you have the blood and you're saved, then that is just what it is. That's all you have to worry about. Don't allow uh, these conspiracy theorists, these people to rob you of your peace because you're being robbed. You, I mean, listen, God knows. God is very well of what's going on. That's why he says, listen, we just have to be saved. Don't worry about the trick of the enemy. Don't worry about the plan of the enemy. Whatever whatever the devil meant for bad, God, God meant for good. Don't worry about what man is doing. You can't get, you have to, you can't focus it. Don't lose your focus, your hope and trust in God because of this pandemic this pandemic is designed to turn people to god the vaccination is not the answer uh the turning to god is the answer um getting a van i guess getting a vaccination to heal the whole land is actually will place the land back in the place where it was a land that had turned their back on god the pandemic has caused the land to turn to god before the pandemic, a lot of the land had turned away from God. The pandemic has caused us to turn to God. So whether uh, we in the body or whether we're out of the body, um, to live as Christ is die as gain. Whatever it may be, it has turned us to God. Is it sad? Is it bad? 
uh, very unfortunate that many people are losing their lives through this? Absolutely. But we must understand that you and I could uh, contract this virus. But at the end of the day, I don't. I wouldn't want nobody to feel sad for me if I caught Corona and died because I fought the good fight. I've lived my life. And if I just happened to die, then it was written. If I live, it's written for me to be here. The people who lost their lives, it was written if they were supposed to be here. And I don't want to say this and sound disheartening, but if they were supposed to be here, they will be here. We must understand it's not sad or bad that they died. They have just gone on before us to go and be with the Lord. Um, God didn't promise nobody long life. He didn't say that you're going to be here forever. He said for you to get saved. He's gone to prepare a place for you that where he is, you may be also in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not, I would have told you so. John chapter 14, the key to all of this is just salvation. This conspiracy theorist is killing me. Nate. I'm looking at the news. Who's going to take the virus? I'm going to take the virus first. You're not even getting the same virus that the rich people are giving. The poor people will not get the same virus that the rich people are giving. That's why the rich people are walking around with no mask and doing whatever they want to do, trumping and walking around with no mask because they got a different by nation's vaccination that they're going to give those who are in low income areas. At this point in time, what I will tell you is that you just need to have Jesus and pray that you have the blood of Jesus. And if God so fit to keep you here, good morning. If not, good night. We will see you on the other side. And that's, I know that probably sound disheartening. You guys want somebody to get on here and say, I rebuke you, coronavirus in the name of Jesus. But that's just not how it works. You can't rebuke what God has sent. You can't rebuke what God has allowed. When God told him to mock the door closed with the blood of the lamb, there was one person out there talking about, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And the whole time it was God coming through. When they said it was going to be a flood, somebody says, I rebuke you, say the name of Jesus the whole time is God coming through. Every pandemic and everything that has ever happened with man has always been God coming through and has always been us trying to remove what God has sent. And you can't remove what God has sent. If God has sent something to turn his people to him, who are you to rebuke, whether good or bad? If God, the, the, the Bible says that God chastised those whom he loved. What type of chastisement do you want? What do you think this is? This is a chastisement to an um, adulterous nature, idolatry, a, a um, idolatrous nation who has turned away from God. How does God get a idolatrous nation to turn back to them? The only one of the only few nations that's still suffering with something that other countries still have got a rap on, but we're still stuck in it. One of the smartest, one of the uh, best military, best army, all that. But we can't seem to get our hands on this. But we're one of the biggest nations who have turned their back on God. And that's why we still have it. Don't get caught up in the vaccine. Get caught up in salvation. Are you saved? Do, do you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? The Bible teaches you and I that he whoever, whosoever called the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, I don't care if you take the vaccine or you don't. What I care about, the Bible says that uh, Jesus says he is the great physician. He is the great physician. If it, he, listen, he, um, if you, if you, uh, if you without sin, if you're not sick, then I guess you don't need a physician. But, the first vaccination needs to be the uh, vaccination that clears the air, clears the separation between you and God. The Bible says if you draw near unto God, God will draw near unto you. That That's the whole thing. Worrying about should I take the vaccination, who they going to give it to, what they saying, they putting out a vaccination. We worried about a vaccination, and every day I'm hearing about people getting killed. The people that's dying in my community up the street, they ain't dying from corona. They be dying from gunshot wounds. People still being, people still being hit by cars. People still being raped, still being molested. People still dying of alcoholism. People still dying of drug addiction. People still dying from meth. It's not even being recorded because the coronavirus just is just a popular thing to be able to get you to buy into the virus. I mean, buy, buy into everything. Yes, it's real, it's happening, but a lot of you right now have sicknesses and you have the flu, you have colds, you have allergies, you have sinus, and you need Theraflu. You don't have corona. There's other sicknesses going on, but this is just the most popular one because one thing about the, one thing about the devil, he moves in fear. The Bible says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. You have to be able to wake up and say, hey, listen, you know what? I trust God. I will not fear. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my light. Whom, whom should I be afraid? I'm not going to fear Corona. I'm going to wear my mask. I'm going to do my PPE. I'm going to wash my hand. But listen, if I get it, 
I believe that he can remove it from me. But if I get it and it takes me out, then hey, that's my life. I chose a life that says if I should die, then I'm going to be with him. It doesn't say that salvation says that I get saved. God gives me everything I want and I live a life here in on earth in paradise, getting all these blessings and nothing's going to happen to me. Um, it, it, it doesn't always mean um, what's what's the scripture that um, we we all we all we always quote in um, Isaiah. Oh, boy, it's going to come to me. It said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's it's. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Well, listen, sometimes we must understand is that, and I said this before in Bible study, is that um, some sometimes God gives us something to remove us from this earthly temple so that we can be with him. That That's the only way out of here. I don't know, and I don't know any other way to get to heaven but by death. If you know another way, man, inbox me and let me know how else do we get to heaven Unless we die, you got to die to get there. And the only way you get there, unless you die, is through the rapture. And if the rapture doesn't come, then death is the only way that you go and be the, with the Father. You, you guys that say you love God so much, you love Him on earth, but you don't love Him enough to go be with Him. You can't love Him on earth, and then when He's time to come to get you, you say I don't want to be with Him. You love Him, you love Him on earth, but don't want to go be with Him in heaven. Set your affections on things above, not on things beneath. This, this, this Christ walk is really a detachment from this world and an uh, attachment to the things of God. You you two attached to things down here that you worried about a vaccination. He told them in the Old Testament to get the blood of the lamb. He didn't tell them to go to God to get the vaccination. The woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years tried every vaccination known to man and still what? The Bible says she spent all her money trying to get better. And then she met Jesus and her issue was cleared up. Salvation. No other vaccination. What what other so you get a vaccination to live longer and in the end all that does is prolong listen. God because because God is grace and God is mercy. Sometimes God is only prolonging your life to give you enough time to be able to introduce to him. God showed me one time, he said, it's not about me allowing people to live longer than others. I said, God, why do you take good people? He says, because good people ready to go. Bad people, I have to um, give them a little bit more time and I'm giving them that time to run into me. Good people ready to go. What is good? Good. I'm saying good. We always say, God, why you always take the good ones? Because the good ones ready to go. Grandma, she ready to go. Your mother, she ready to go. You, you not. You still playing. A lot of young people not ready to go. Them older people, they ready to go. They can go because they've lived their life and they, they, they've done enough foolish where they know him. But he has to be able to issue. Um, he has to grant some a little bit more time to get it together. So when you see bad people stuck here or bad people who, who just seem to get one time after another you a person he just keeps giving opportunity after two and the grace man, he's waiting for you to know him then when you know him he feel comfortable coming to get you that's just real don't nobody want to teach him like that man you know what i was just looking at the uh i said this the other day and a lot of people didn't like what i said this we just had a shooting that happened where two men in the front seat of the car the baby in the back the baby got killed and you know what? Because we don't understand the wisdom of God, the baby ready to go. He ain't did nothing. Innocent blood. The two men in the front seat, not so. God says, I can allow that bullet to hit that baby because I'm trying to get out. Because them two, they not ready to go yet. You got to understand that's the mercy of God. But I can't, you can't explain it to somebody's family that God allow a bullet to hit a one-year-old because the one-year-old was ready to go. But the two sitting in the front seat wasn't ready. Two thieves on the cross wasn't ready to go. Jesus on the cross with them. If it if it wasn't for the conversation, Jesus talking to the two thieves, they was getting ready to die to go to hell. Jesus, they met Jesus on the cross. Then they was ready to go. The baby in the car was ready to go. The two men, not so. So God allowed them to allow the baby to get hit. I don't nobody want to hear great teaching like that. 14 year old got hit. They were shooting at the guys on the corner. They wasn't ready to go. That's the love of God to take somebody else 
who's ready to go and spare somebody life who wasn't ready. Well, ain't that something else? You in a car accident with all these people. Everybody else died. You live. You wasn't ready to go. They were. The mercy of God. People got corona on their deathbed. They are being saved. You don't know great teaching. What if I told you that everybody that has been contracted this corona because they got so sick, they called out to the name of the Lord Jesus and got saved. You don't understand great teaching because you don't understand that it took them to get sick to be able to call out to his name. You've heard that over 300 people died from corona, but you don't know how a lot of them 300 people that died, a lot of them people received salvation because it took corona to make them call in the name of the Lord, but you don't understand great teaching. This is just what it is. Y'all want somebody to come on here and prophesy and get y'all to sow them little seeds and put the cash up and all that and rebuke Corona and God got something coming for y'all? I can't believe that God is talking prosperity in a time like this. I can't believe that you're looking for prosperity in a time like this. I can't believe that you're looking for God to do something for you in a time like this. I can't believe that you're looking for God to open up heaven and pour you out a blessing at a time like this. Nobody's teaching salvation right now. Everybody's teaching rebuking the corona so that we can have all the things that God has promised us. That's what everybody's teaching right now. Your pastor, your ministers, God is getting ready to move this thing. We're getting ready to go into 2021 and everything that God has for you, it's coming. It's on the way. No, it ain't. This year started off just like the way y'all say next year getting ready to be. This year is going to, next year is going to look just like this year. I promise you, I'm not preaching that new year, new me. Listen, the same thing's going to happen this year until you get your life right with God, until you receive the adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, until you get things together. It's always going to look exactly like it's looking right now. You ain't going to get no better. You're going to keep wanting better. You ain't going to do no better. It's going to look just like it's look right now. I'm telling y'all, man. God. Let me tell you one thing about God since he chastised he loved. Listen, if God sent the whole storm after Jonah and, and almost killed everybody on the ship for one person, you don't, you don't think that, that God sends storms for the people that he loved? God was going to kill everybody on the ship if Jonah didn't get thrown overboard. When God wants you, he don't care who's around you. He will come get you. He don't care who he got to kill, who he got to move. That Because God is all about his plan. And you know why God was so adamant about Jonah? Because Jonah was supposed to go preach to Nineveh. It was some people over, you know, hundreds of people, thousands of people. I forget how many it was that needed to hear his word. And God says, no, my word don't return to me void. There's people that need salvation. And you need to go preach salvation, whether you like it or not. It has to be done. He didn't tell them. He didn't tell them to go preach and, and tell them all the good things that were coming. He didn't tell them. They said, "Man, listen, go preach salvation. Let them know that they need to repent, because I'm coming." Yeah, that's all God ever do. He sends a forewarning. This uh, this virus and all that's taking place is a forewarning. It's just a forewarning. A vaccination is not the answer. You want to quote, you want to quote Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name should turn from their wicked ways, praise, seek my blood, you know, all that. The virus has a lot to do with our nation, After, has a lot to do with who we are as a nation. It affects us as a whole. But he's given us the blood. He has he he has given us salvation. He has to deal. He, he has to deal with us as a whole. God says, don't separate. I'm not gonna it's not for you to separate the wheat from the tares. Let the wheat grow with the tares. The wheats and the tares look just like God says, let me separate that. He says, sometime when you try to deal with the do you try to remove the tears? You pull up the wheat. God says, I can't do it like that. Because by removing some of the tears, I might hurt the wheat. He says, I reign on the just as well as the unjust. God is dealing with us all. But God says, when I come through, so you don't get what wasn't meant for you, you must have protection. And what is the protection? It's the salvation. What is the protection? It's the blood. 
What is the blood? The blood that go over top of the doorpost. The blood of the lamb that he was telling you about in the Old Testament. The blood of the lamb that when John said, listen, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God going to send, God going to come through. You just got to be covered when he do. That's just who God is. That's the word right there. I don't, I don't know no other way to put it. Vaccine, no vaccine. Whether you take it, whether you don't. You, you still got to meet him one day. Vaccine doesn't fix where you spend eternity. Vaccine may prolong. It would be a shame to get a vaccine and get hit by a bus. And I'm not being disheartening. It would be a shame to get the vaccine and get, then die in a car accident. It would be a shame to get the vaccine and get a bad batch of blow. Some boat. You know what I mean? Get AIDS, but get the vaccine. But you got the vaccine. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You, you got to understand that you have been living this long without a vaccine. Something, something's kept you long. You have, you have something greater than the vaccine. You have God. That's all you ever needed was God. You don't put your trust in man to give you something. Only, only God can prolong life. You must understand. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. He said, I prayed to God three times to remove this thorn in the flesh. God says, no, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul had something that was supposed to kill him. The thing that Paul had wasn't even the thing that killed him. Paul got bit by a viper, supposed to pass out. And, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Bit by a viper. They was looking at him like, is he going to pass out? He didn't pass out. Didn't pass out at all. Reason why he didn't pass out because listen, he had the blood. And when you have the blood, the Bible says, listen, you should trample over serpents. Yeah. See, when you got the blood, things that's supposed to harm you don't. You don't want to understand great teaching. Paul had a thorn in the flesh, didn't kill him. Paul got bit by a snake, didn't kill him. Some of you walk around right now with corona, then had corona two, three times. Don't even know it because you ain't been tested, but you have it. Some of us didn't had it, it had us down. Some of us have it right now, don't even know it. But because you worship, because you praise, because your focus is not on corona, because a part of corona and receiving it, to be honest, is fear. Fear is the weakening of the spiritual immune system. For I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. For a man, so a man think of, so is he. I think I got corona. Well, you do. I tell you what, if I think I got it, then I lose right there. Listen, I know one thing. God got me. And I tell you what, whatever's in my body, I know that I'm a spiritual man. The spiritual, my spiritual man carries my mortal body. I'm immortal. That's how I live. That's what I believe. I'm immortal. You, you may think that's crazy talk, but I am immortal. I don't die. I graduate. That's real talk. That's real teaching right there. That's You have to be a real disciple in Christ to say I'm immortal. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. I'm immortal. I don't die. I graduate. Celestial versus terrestrial. I get a new body. I don't die. What do, you, what do you think he means where he says when you receive him, you should have everlasting life? Listen, you get saved. Listen, if you don't get saved, you die twice. You get saved, you die once. I'm immortal. I don't die, I pass on. Caterpillar to a butterfly. He gave you great teaching. That's why he made the caterpillar and butterfly. He was trying to get you to understand the metamorphosis. The caterpillar leaves the, leaves the, butter, the, the uh, caterpillar. Um, leaves that old body and he becomes a buddy fuck. He becomes a, he becomes a butterfly of great teaching. We, let me tell you what, man. And I've been there before. A lot of us. I'm not big bad Joe. I'm not saying I'm ready to die right now, but let's be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. He take me, take me. What can I do? He got. But these times that we're living in is going to expose who really love God. Yeah. Because some of us are fighting to stay here. I, I tell you what, when I read the Bible, them old disciples, they was 
they wanted to go be with them. Not these new Christians. The new Christians don't want to go. They don't want to go. They want heaven on earth. But them old Christians, they couldn't wait. Them, them cotton picking Christians, and the ones that was getting whipped, they wanted to go be with the Lord. Not the new church. We don't really want to go be with the Lord. We don't really love God. That's why we're in so much fear. We don't even believe what we're preaching and teaching. That's real talk. Yeah. Listen, I would. That vaccination, if you get it, you get it. But the real thing about it is um, having Christ. That's what it's all about. All about salvation. That's my spiel for today. I love y'all.